Yeah. Yeah. And is that is that just at the lower back? Do you think? Is that where you see it? I'm getting. Are you doing the? Are you observing the posing and stuff? Yeah. 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 I mean, I get some. We'll also take a look now. But yeah, if you want your photos, he's shifting just slightly. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Almost rotation. Yeah. See how the the line there for the uh, yeah for the underwear is a bit more raised on that right. Yeah. Let's take a look, shall we? So you feel um. You get yeah, a trim. You get a trim on. Yeah, tomorrow. Friday. Tomorrow. Well, yeah, we, got, we, we, we got London on Friday. Friday morning. Yeah. So got to be there for that press conference or some bullshit. So go there Friday morning. So it's for us getting haircuts up here. Yeah. You know. Go to any boys with it. Yeah. Got that dark guy fit. That's cool. On uh, the high street, that black dude. Which one? Some new black one on the um, on way with on way with high street. He's good mate. Decent, is he? Yeah, fitness spots. You trying a new one or you've been to him before? Blessed, he's called. Blessed? Yeah, it's not done. Even if he's on it, he's good. I'm about to lower this, yeah? Yeah. See so it just down here where it's almost compressed on that right? Yeah. It seems like it's compressed on the right in terms of the QL yeah. muscle yeah. and it's tilted and it's making a curve slightly. Okay. Let's have a. I'll check when you're non-weight bidding, but do me a favor, just give a, do a double bicep again, just see if I can see the changes. Okay, yeah, you can see it just there. Okay, pop onto your front. So Matt, you from, from America? Yeah, I'm from the US, yeah, yeah. but I live in, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia area. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sound a bit different to Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> So have you come over for the for the prep? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Came over last Tuesday. How are you finding it? It's good, man. You enjoying yeah, it? I'm enjoying being here, yeah. What do you think of the gym? Have you seen it before? Yeah, yeah. that's the first time, yeah, so it's been good. Something else, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, you can just see the lower lumbar, so sort of L4, L5, where it just kinks in there. That's what's coming in, so we'll do we're going to do some adjustments to the pelvis, some adjustments to the lower lumbar on this left side. Well, first we'll get you onto the left side then, Nith. So, facing this way. Do you apologise for my voice? Are you sick? It's not, I'm not sick, I just got a sore throat. I literally come back from Mexico on the plane. Recirculation, oh, yeah. all the oxygen and stuff. And it's just, I think they might add some sort of chemicals as well into it. And it's just in a number on my throat. So, uh, it's crazy the transformation from now, actually from the first time I've seen you till now. So then? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> the definition is unreal. And I'm going to bring this leg down. And if I'm going to put my foot onto yours, yeah. we're going to work. We're going to impulse down, okay? Yeah. Deep breath in. And over here. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> and then if you can just go ahead and pop on the other side. Right, same with this one, we're move back slightly. I'm just going to switch this around. I feel all right. See that? Yeah. There it is. Take yeah. that in. And out. Good. All right? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Go on to your back there. Do a bit more acupuncture to the right side. Give us a big hug. <laughs> that should be fine. And roll it towards me slightly now. And then back over. Take a deep breath in. Good. Good. Okay, perfect. Pop onto your front again. Good. How that feel? No. <laughs> no. Can you feel it going in? Yeah. Yeah. We need to get some new customized needles for you. They're too <laughs> short. They won't go through. They won't go through as part of spinals. Well, the diasha size. <laughs> 
Why can you have bigger ones, yeah? You can't get big ones. You get big ones again. The thing is, majority of the population won't need them. Oh, okay. Because you think of the tissue underneath, you think of the, the, the organs and everything underneath yeah. the cervix, underneath the muscle. You know, especially if you're going into this thoracic region, if you're going directly down, you've got all the respiratory system there. You don't need exactly so long needles, but oh, yeah. for yourself, I think you would, because <laughs> these paraspinals are very, 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 very thick. So it's a little bit different to the acupuncture, the old school medical acupuncture. Dry needling is more. It's more musculoskeletal. So we find the tight, taut muscles that are have lots of tangled up muscle fibers, which is what I was palpating for. And you insert the needle into the tangled up fiber just to reduce the muscle tightness, the muscle tension. And hopefully, by reducing the muscle tension, just hold it onto the spine. It'll let go of it, and the spine can go back into the sort of straight position. A lot of the a lot of people get confused with dry needling with, with acupuncture and acupuncture can be used for all sorts of different problems, stress, anxiety, but they put they I think they I'm not too clear on the actual acupuncture, dry needling what I do, obviously I'm qualified in, but the acupuncture is more they control the energy levels or the chi of the body, I believe, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, these feel in there if you feel alright? Good one, yeah. So I'm just turning these tens machine on a second, yeah. if okay. I'm just gonna leave it on for a minute where the needles are on. Okay, but you feel that? Yeah. How's it feeling? Good. How right side's going. Okay. Good. Okay, we'll give that a minute with the blocks and the needles. Stiff, you know? Definitely needed it. <laughs> we get off. I think it's a you gotta stay on top of um, the maintenance work, especially you know at this stage because your body's so fragile. So doing things like this is just gonna help keep the performance high, which is that's that's what we base everything off of. You know, is is keeping the performance up in the gym. Um, and if you're banged up or if you're you can't function as your body needs to, it's gonna hinder all that. So in that aspect, I think it's very, very important. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at guys like Jay Cutler, I think he said at one point he was spending a thousand dollars a week on maintenance work, so. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. Going harder isn't always the Doing. best option all the time. You need to kind of really feel around, talk to, your patient as well and finding out where they're at and especially um, with yourself competing at the weekend, finding out where the training's at, the nutrition, the rest and just doing doing really enough to get them where they need to be without causing injury or any trauma. Have a little stand up walk around, check that you're feeling all right. Yeah, look, look, look straight in. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, looks good there. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any problems, let us know. Yeah, we'll do. Have the best of luck for the weekend. Oh, thank you very much. See you later. Thank you very much. With Nathan, um, I think, honestly, with, like, my top guys, my biggest role is, uh, just like navigating navigating the prep and uh, because I don't ever have to question or, or second guess the work that Nathan's doing uh, and Nathan was also successful before we even started working together so it's just about trying to fine-tune and, and learn each other and communicate to, to get a better end result you know and um, you know just like I think the, the the most important thing that I can do is pay attention to, to his feedback and and then have a very attentive eye to um, the changes that uh, need to be made. Um, you know, and even like, that's why I'm out here right now because uh, there's a lot, 
at, at this level, there's a lot that, that goes into these shows, uh, you know, in terms of financial success for, for Nathan and um, his career, and, and these things matter. So as, as much as I can, I try to be a part and, and get out uh, because it's like, I think the biggest difference is, is when I'm when I'm there in person. I can I can visibly see how the skin looks, um, you know, and, and the fullness factor. Like like for example, we uh, we we did the Olympia last year, and um, you know I was very happy with how he looked there. Uh, and then he went on and did Prague, and the the 3D ness that Nathan has, it doesn't really or really honestly anybody you can't really translate that via just pictures and, yeah. and videos. Um, so I wasn't in Prague, um, you know, so I felt that uh, even though I was really happy with, with how his condition looked, he could have been fuller, but communicating that just through pictures is hard, you know, so as much as I can, I try to be out here for that, um, you know, but this is, um, I, I, I put a lot on myself because like I said, like this is, this is his living, you know, this is how he makes a living and um, so it, it matters a lot, you know, and I care a lot about his success in that way, uh, but like, yeah. I don't, you know, you'll see today in the gym too. I don't, I don't micromanage him. You know, like yesterday when we trained, basically, um, you know, he knows what I expect out of him in the gym, and and he does it, you know, to the best of his ability. So even yesterday, like I picked an exercise, he picked an exercise, and and I, and I like to work together with these top guys because they're pros for a reason, you know, and 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 I try to do my best to help them where I can, but at the same time. I don't need to micromanage them or, or dictate them or, you know, even this week, like I'm not, I'm not here to, to drive Nathan into the ground. If anything, I'm actually trying to pull him back out, you know, so that's, that's kind of the role that I like to play um, and just, you know, just grow as a team and, and, and turn this into something more than just a diet, you know, essentially. I only do bodybuilding for one hour a day, nuts in the gym. I don't see it as... As like a job, it's just a hobby. It connects me and my friends together. We like going gym. We like lifting weights. We like eating food. So, you know, that's what we that's what we do for. You know, my weird part about is getting on stage. I don't like getting on stage, but you know that that's part of bodybuilding. You know, most of the time, like today, this time, this video, you might see me. I be with my kids, running around, fighting, play hide and seek, go in the garden, watch football, my son. He plays soccer. Um, I watch I watch football with him. You know, my, do my daughter's gymnastics. I go gymnastics with her. Bodybuilding's always at the back of my mind. It's never at the forefront of everything I do. It's just bodybuilding. At the end of the day, you know, family first, and that's how it'll be. When Nathan says that he's not like fixated on bodybuilding all day long, he truly means it. And the first time that I I really saw this was. Last year, uh, during the Cal Pro, it was uh, the Friday before the show, so he was 24 hours out, and uh, we went shopping in the morning for a little bit, and then, in my mind, the rest of the day was going to be him just being at home, laying on the couch, resting, get, you know, so we could be looking, I could look at him and make sure he was ready, and so we went to the, after we came back and ate a meal, and we went to the competitors meeting, and this was around noon, He's like, let's go back to the mall. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So we ended up spending like three hours at the mall. And and I, at this point, I'm stressing because I can't look at him. But he's just cool and chill as can be, you know. So um, And even last year at the Olympia, it was, it was very similar. Like we were going out and doing things. And, you know, even today, just trying to occupy time rather than just sitting around here and thinking about our next meal or, or whatever. Like we're, we're going out and doing things and... He's very, very active and, and working at the gym, and continuing to keep the, the upkeep of the gym and, and and bring the gym to a continuous, you know, new level of um, things that he can offer to the people here in, in, in Liverpool. Um, so it's it's definitely not like this isn't something you know where we're saying one thing and doing another. It's very balanced, I would say, as best as you can for being at the top of the sport. I do think it's important to kind of disconnect from this and that's why, you know, like I spend time with my wife and, and son and um, I'm a huge sports fan, you know, so I, I, I like to, within my day and as much as I do work, I try to at least for 30 minutes just to, to watch some sports center or, or, or get away from 
bodybuilding because I, I want this to stay fresh for me. I don't want this to become something that like I dread doing, um, especially from a coaching standpoint. You think you're gonna win this weekend? You walked, you walked out yesterday, man. Of course. If I didn't think I was gonna win it, I wouldn't be so sure. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be so sure. You know. No one. No one there. Who I believe there. Big threat to my. Big threat to myself. No one there I haven't beaten before. So, you know why? Why not think I'm gonna win it? Mm. What do you What do you see yourself at the Mr. Olympia this year? You think you're gonna be better than last year? Well, last year I should have got top five. Mm. Even before that, I should have got top five. But at the end of the day, what you get, what you, what you deserve and what you get, is totally different. You know, you don't have a, you don't have a say on it. So it's down to the judges, really. You just got to respect the, their decision. And uh, you know, you, whether you give it or not, it's their decision. But um, I believe I'm a top five, a top five Olympian. I believe I'm top five in the world. Um, sure, you know, for example. Sean Roden, Mr. Olympia. The only guys you can compare to Sean Roden is me and Brandon Curry. You can't compare Rowley, mm. he's just a mass freak, you know. Bonac is small, blocky, you know, wide. So you can't compare him to Sean Roden either. So, mm. you know, with with the, that that being that being said, just to compare me and Brandon with uh, with Sean. And you know, we got him Rowley because there's, now there's no Rami. 
in the Olympia. There's no match freaks no more. You know, Steve Quicko is probably the closest match freak you will get. So, in for Roly, it's a, he's, a, he's either going to be, he's either going to win it, or he's, he's going to get top eight. Mm -hmm. You know, because you need to, you need to have a a level, a level balance. You know, you can't just have Sean Roden, who's aesthetically pleasing, small waist, nice abdominals, nice V shape. You know, um, and then have Roly second, and then go back to. And an aesthetic physique there. That's no, that's not. It's not right in the judging. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself once uh, as as a Mr. Olympia winner? Of course. If I didn't see myself as Mr. Olympia winner, I wouldn't be putting my body through the shit I put it through every day. And that's the God's honest truth. What since happens? I got mm -hmm. since I got to the Olympia the first time, I've always believed that I could get to the Olympia. People thought I was arrogant. I was up my own ass, but I, you know, why? Because I, because I believe in what I, in what I can do. If you know, if you've come from where I've come from in life, you know, I'm a winner. I'm successful already. I'm already a champion in life. So why can't I believe I can win a trophy for, for having a, having a body if I've succeeded in life? Nice words. Do you? What happens if you win the Mr. Olympia? What's after that? That's it, man. Done. I'm done. I'm done. There's no, there's no, um, nothing else to achieve in life. You know, I told, I told Matt the same thing. If we were to win Mr. Olympia this year, I'm finished. I don't see the point. I am never gonna beat Lee Haney. I am never gonna beat Ronnie Coleman. Never catch Phil Heath. You know, he's only on seven. So to be a legend, you need to get eight and nine. That's never gonna happen, you know. If I, the only time I would think about doing it, maybe a second time, is if my partner said or Matt said, "Look, let's just do it. Let's just prove to everyone last time it wasn't a fluke." Then I would do it, but I wouldn't keep on doing it consecutive years. Mm. You know, there's just there's just no points. There's no, what else can you achieve? You're Mr. Olympia, Mr. Olympia. What you want? What you want? Seven times after your name? There's nothing. There's nothing. Nothing to prove, man. You know, me Matt will have an Olympia trophy. I'll have an Olympia trophy. What's there to prove to anyone? People might say, oh, he was lucky. Like that that other guy, the um, Egyptian guy, what's his name? What's his name? Um, Samir. 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 Samir Bahud. You know, but in the day, he's Mr. he's Mr. Olympia. You know? So it doesn't matter what they, what, what they say, because then people who say it will never have an Olympia title. And you'll have one if you win it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to shoot another video when you win Mr. Olympia? When I was when Mr. Olympia, nah, bro. <laughs> when I win Mr. Olympia, I'm getting my fat ass on a pedal bike. I'm getting healthy as fuck. <laughs> and then my plan set to Matt, you know, people people keep laughing at me. But I ran a I ran a marathon several years ago, when I before I turned pro. My next goal, you know, my two my two goals in life, win Mr. Olympia, and then I would like I would like to uh, cycle the length of the country of England. Yes. So. From the top of England to the bottom of England, you know it's not it's not it's not it's nothing, but I, I would like to do it. You know I like I like being by myself, my own time, and I think that's something that's something to be, to be proud of, that to achieve because it's a few it's a few hundred miles. So just to do that, you know that's something I want to do. Hmm. You don't think you're gonna have a problem like psychologically when you lose all the mess like people have had it in the past? I don't care. I'm looking forward to, to go small. Um, I've been incarcerated many times, and I've lost I've lost the mass as quick as I've put it on. So it doesn't really phase me losing the mass. You know, some like I said, like I said, like I said earlier, earlier on, some people's lives are fixed on bodybuilding. My life isn't fixed on bodybuilding. It's fixed on gym because I love gym. I will always love gym. But you can you can still do gym and do different things. You can go CrossFit, you can go cycling, you can go swimming. You can still love do, being in sport and doing activity without having to be big, you know. So to me, it doesn't psychologically it doesn't really bother me to go to go somewhere, you know. And look at look at Dorian, you know, he shows himself. You can still have a good life, you know. Um, look at Justin Compton, he has a good life. He's healthy, he's good. So these guys all show that it doesn't it doesn't affect them. Justin's still upbeat, he's still young, and he's still young, but he's upbeat about life. 
so why so why not be because before I was big I was upbeat I was happy so why wouldn't I be happy when I'm back to <laughs> normal man size I think anybody that pursues something um, with the goal of being at the top of their sport more so than the the physical attributes I think it's the like I think it, in my mind or, or for myself personally it'd be harder to shut off and just just transition right away from um, you know the mental aspect because you you mentally you've you've got to be in a place to be able to achieve things to be able to push yourself you know without anybody else around you telling you to do things and that's day in and day out for years you know so once you stop I personally feel like that the mindset of that killer instinct is what probably is harder to shut off um, you know if, if you're in a sport for the right reasons um, I don't think that you should be so latched to the physical you know because the physical regardless if you're if you're known for your beauty, if you're known for your muscle, if you're known for shooting free throws, you know, or, or whatever, that's all going to fade, you know. But I think the mental aspect of what makes somebody um, is, is what lasts, you know. So it's like kind of like a soldier that comes back from war. Uh, and no, I'm not comparing bodybuilding to, to being a soldier. But what I'm saying is like you hear that it's hard for a, tra you know, a transitional period for a soldier to go back into civilian life. Um, you know, and, and I think that to some extent, I would say that that's probably part of what makes a champion a champion is, is their mindset. And then when, when it's done, you know, when they, when they call it quits, um, just kind of slowly transitioning back into just being a normal human. Uh, I mean, even from just like a meal standpoint, you know, like some, some people hate the food, some people love the food, you know, so, um, when you you're so used to and accustomed to eating this you know six times a day uh it's it's probably initially somewhat of a a lifestyle change or a weird thing to, to wake up and, and not have to be fixated on the food or you know not have to focus on well if i'm going to be gone for six hours where's my meals and things like that so it's definitely you know a, a mental relief in one aspect but i would i would say for like the true champions that's probably the part that is a little bit harder to let go um, of or just transition to in my mind. Late man, late. Got out of bed late, didn't you? See what I'm saying? I'm gonna be a Lego. This is this is me and Coach. How are you? Yeah. Respect, 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 yeah